Guys, welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Wanted to do a little video today on the difference between synthetic and natural fragrances and sort of the debate that always seems to pop up, but between these these two things. You know, once I, you know, started making sense or trying to make sense and join some of these perfume groups, you know, I'll see people will say, oh, I only make natural fragrances or I'm only interested in making natural fragrances. So first, we'll talk about it from a factual standpoint, and then I'll give you an opinion. Factually, natural doesn't mean better, and I think we all understand that, right? If you smell a rose, or you get a headspace analysis of a rose, which is where you sort of capture the air that you'd be smelling um, when you smell a rose and then break down the individual chemicals because that's what sort of makes up the smell of a rose these you know different things like geraniol and um, I mean there's a ton of them rose oxide and all sorts of different molecules you know um, a lot of them are just aroma chemicals so that's what actually makes up these different fragrances and compounds in natural fragrances. Doesn't mean that there aren't some things that are synthetic that go into perfumes, but a lot of times they're just isolated molecules. And just because something is natural, obviously doesn't make it better. Um, you know, we could say, oh, well, natural safer. Not necessarily. You know, you could eat a shitload of Laffy Taffy and be fine. Not the most natural product in the world. And then you could eat one poison mushroom. You could take one poison mushroom from the ground and it could destroy a whole city, right? Or probably not a city, but like a village, right? The poison in that mushroom. So just because something's natural doesn't mean it's safer and it certainly doesn't mean that it's better. Now, there are natural uh, ingredients and fragrances that I really love. Like these ouds from Ensar, right? This um, Assam Wild and this Midori Key and this um, this is their Tigerwood Royal. These are beautiful, beautiful, unadulterated oods, right? And then you've got like Vanilla Absolute, which the prices spiked up so insanely on that uh, recently. But it's like one of the best smelling natural things I've ever smelled in my life. Of course, Sandalwood from my sore. This uh, another amazing smelling, buttery, rich, nuanced sandalwood. But then there are some aroma chemicals that are amazing smelling. Ambroxan, you know, for whatever you want to say about how Creed, I mean, how um, D Dior used it in Sauvage and all these designers are using it now and overdosing it in their fragrances, it smells incredible. I think Iso E Super, another aroma chemical that smells really, really good. Obviously, we know Eccentric Molecules made a lot of money just off Iso E Super. And then um, an isolate like Coumarin, which um, is considered an aroma chemical, right? Because it's a part of tonka bean, is another beautiful, creamy smelling molecule. So again, there's, there's, um, there's different qualities to all of these things and some are good and some are bad right now when we're actually talking about fragrances here's the thing you can have it all i think often fragrances that are 100 percent synthetic can come off smelling like um they're like the if you've ever seen that cat woman if you look her up on google you'll see she was this pretty woman and she she did all this crazy shit and now she looks like a cat and that's sort of the danger when you're um when you're using all synthetics you can come off smelling very artificial and it can kind of come off as weird and plasticky right and then all natural Sometimes you could come out looking like Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford's this woman who's beautiful and she, I don't think she's had much work done um, and she's very beautiful. But um, sometimes we also know that looking natural um, can can be bad. You know, sometimes you don't, people, women don't age well and I'm just using the women comparison because I think it's easier for me. And you know, maybe the ideal 
thing is like a woman who's gorgeous naturally or just pretty naturally and gets a couple of things done as her life goes on and you have this combination of natural beauty and a little bit of science and i think those are the best fragrances in my opinion right so like here's an example of a synthetic fragrance that i think did it really well nautica voyage i highly doubt that there's anything natural in this it just going with smell and cost and all those things is a very cheap fragrance. It smells very synthetic, but it smells really good. To me, this is sort of the height of like a affordable synthetic fragrance. Many synthetic fragrances, especially in this price point, aren't able to get away with something that smells so good because it's really hard to do this. Now, natural fragrances, for the most part, are very hard to do well. If you combine enough natural materials, essential oils, absolutes, CO2 extracts, whatever, more often than not, it's going to end up smelling like mud. And what that means is that's a sort of term that's used in the perfume industry. It just all winds up smelling similar. And for me, too many natural fragrances all smell the same. And I find them very hard to distinguish them. I think you need a little bit at the very least of some synthetics in there to give the fragrances lift and body and volume. And you've sort of heard, heard if you've heard this expression, it's been said a lot of time when making fragrances that, um, you know, synthetics are the bones of the fragrance or the, the skeleton and, um, and naturals are the flesh. And that, that makes a lot of sense to me. But here's an example of a natural fragrance. And there's not many that I have that uh, I could speak about in such a good way by Misha's Perfumery. And this is Spice Cocoa. And this is a natural fragrance that's absolutely incredible. It doesn't smell like mud. It smells exactly like it says, like spiced cocoa. If you like intoxicate it, bye bye Killian. This to me is, um, is sort of the, uh, the the natural version of that and if you replace the coffee he, coffee in um and intoxicate it with like a hot cocoa note then you kind of have uh, this here and this is a wonderful wonderful fragrance but my point here guys is that this guy abbott rouge by garlan the garlan you guys know was one of the was the first i'm sorry at least commercial uh perfume house to use any synthetics, I believe it was Coumarin, um, in their perfumes. And to me, this is like the intersection of aroma chemical and naturals. And I think when you have that intersection and it hits right, those are the best fragrances. So to me, a fragrance that's 100% synthetic mostly is gonna miss the mark. To me, a fragrance that 100% natural is not appealing to me at all. To me, the best fragrances and the most enjoyable fragrances are the fragrances that are the combination and the best of both worlds, what is referred to as mixed media. It has some naturals, it has some synthetics. To me, the best ones are ones that are, I would say are like 65% natural, 35% synthetic. I think that's a really good ratio. But the point I just wanted to make in this video is that just because something's natural, and this is true, I think, in all, every piece of life, it doesn't mean that it's better. It doesn't mean that it's better for you. And it certainly doesn't mean that it's safer. So that's just my little rant on naturals versus synthetics and perfumery. If you have any questions, I'm not an expert on this by any means. Most of this is opinion, but I'm certainly willing to give my opinion if you have any questions. And let me know what you think of this debate in the comments. What do you, how do you feel about naturals versus synthetics and perfumery? Drop a comment. Let me know. Let me know if videos like this are informational to you guys or something you're interested in. And I'll see you again real soon with more videos, guys. You already know what it is. My name, obviously, is Maxine.